Well, mailbag time, we've got a whole bunch of stuff here. I had a package which had a bunch of packages in it, so I suddenly had a large number of packages turn up. Brilliant, let's get stuck into it. It was almost like an empty box. Got no weight to it. Ah, here we go. It's an E32 by e -Bite. E32 900T30D, another 30D, and another 30D. So I've got three of the same. So these are 900 megahertz LOR modules, basically. I've been using these sorts of things on various projects, and I wanted to get some more. Really easy to use, really convenient. I highly recommend if you're doing any RF stuff, you need to do anything over the distance, on hundreds of meters or a kilometer or so, you could do it easy. Bunch of little SD card modules. So I purchased other ones previously, and they ended up being absolute rubbish. They just weren't very good. They were cheap, like a dollar each or something, so I wouldn't expect too much from them. These are, I think, two dollars each, maybe three. Slightly more expensive, but I've already got one of these, and it actually works really well. Obviously, just plain USB A connection, and you just slot the SD card in there. I've been really happy with the one. The SD card slots in really nicely. It's actually worked in times where other types haven't worked either, as well. Like computer actually recognise this more readily than some other types, so. I've got a bunch of these ones because you always need them. 512 gigabytes. Uh, I think it's just a converter. So I think I know what's in here. This is a two trees magnetic bed for 3D printings. Right, so I've already got one of these for one of my Ender 3s, and actually, well, both my Ender 3s now have both got these kind of beds on them. They're really convenient because it's got a magnetic base you stick on to your existing base, and then you've got this top sheet. This is a double sided one, I think. It's got this new style which is like double sided. So, there is the magnetic base, and then you've got this smoother one here, this surface, which I found works really well on PG. And then on the other side is this much coarser PEI type sheet, which probably works quite well on things like PLA. Having a double sided one gives you options. I found that the version here, like this smoother version, which works really well for PETG, doesn't work well on PLA, which is a bit weird. So I'm hoping that a double sided one like this will do the job quite nicely. So I'll put links down below for these. This, I think it's a local package. It's got this tear strip, but it doesn't actually tear down the strip. There is no tear strip. So these are two web cameras, vision ones. I saw these online, I thought Hick Vision, they make decent stuff. Let's try these out. As usual, I've got more than one I wanted. I've got two. So you go. Standard kind of format. Got a sticker on here, I'm going to peel that off yet. USB, obviously. Which, does that pivot? Yes, it does, that pivots. And we've got this little clippy base, which you can stick onto a monitor or something. Just got the standard threaded there for a tripod mount or something like that. Yeah, it's got a ball joint. Nice. Very versatile. So I'd hook this up actually at some point and try it out and see how good it looks. For Hick Vision do decent stuff. I've been impressed with the other things I've seen them making, which is like security camera stuff and things like that. They've been really high quality. It's the first time I've seen a Hick Vision webcam, so we'll give it a go. Right, it's more of these e-bike modules. So the first one I showed you was the T30D, this is the T20D, the difference is the power output. The 30D is one watt module, these are 100 milliwatt modules. If I hold them side by side, you can see the difference in size. Maybe you can see the difference in size, there's a bit of difference. Not much in it, but these are adjustable, so they actually reduce the power down. So what I just tend to do is I'll get the high power module, and I adjust the power down in the settings, so it's not actually producing that much power, it's actually producing the same power as this one. That means it's still legal, but it's um, more robust, because it's not stressing it so much. Big box, we'll get to the other big packages in a minute. We will need it at some point, but I don't need it now. I've used the one I did have, which I showed you previously, another mailbag. So this thing is a water pump controller. I've already used one of these before. I actually have one of these sitting as a spare for when my water pump controller played up again. 
about a year ago I did a video on a water pump controller which I repaired and I got it better but it wasn't great so I ended up needing to buy a new pump because it actually damaged the pump because what happened is the pump controller which is one of these much simpler type it failed and what I was doing is just running the water pump continuously and it ended up basically burning the pump out I think it must be like a plastic and pedal or something in there it just destroyed it so I ended up having to buy a new pump that wasn't cheap and that came again with a standard basic controller on it which was what killed the last pump I knew that I'd be okay at the time because it's all brand new, it's going to work alright for a while, but I didn't trust it. So what I did is I bought one of these at that time, and I put it to one side, knowing I was going to need it one day. That time was about two weeks ago. I've now got a controller like this on my water pump, and what this has, instead of the simple controllers that come with the pump, is that you've got adjustable settings. You can actually set the pump pressures for the turn on and turn off point, whereas the basic ones, they just fixed values you know they, they are what they are it might be I think a set of five bar was the default value for those things but the pumps actually struggle to get to five bar they will get there but they really struggle they actually have quite a long run time just trying to get that last little bit and you can actually see it when I've put this one on there because I say well the other one I've purchased which was identical to this when I put that one on there and set that up I can actually see what those pump pressures were acting like and I could see it's actually struggling to get above about 4.7 bars when it starts to struggle a little bit, it get up to 4.7 quite quickly, and then above that is actually starting to struggle quite a bit. And it could get to 4.9 in probably 20 seconds or so from 4.7, be another 30 seconds after that to get to 5, and then it shut off. This allows me to actually set this up properly, and you can set the cutting and cut off points. And so I've set it about 4.6 bar, I think I've set it out to. So it's not actually running for ages, struggling to try and build up pressure. And that's plenty of pressure what we need anyway, don't need more than that, it's fine. The turn on pressure I've set quite high. I think I'll set it about 3 bar, something like that, 3.5, some of like that. So it means it'll actually kick in a lot sooner, which means you get much less variation in pressure. So it's actually working much better overall. I've got that installed, and now I don't have a spare, and I always have spares, so I had to get another one. So I think this can go up to like 8 bar, something like that. Like the maximum pressure is 9.8 bar, maximum cutting pressure is 6 bar, so it's all adjustable. It's got two modes, one that turns on only, based on time I think, and then there's another one um, which allows you to set the actual limits, up and down limits for the actual cutting and cutout pressures. And that's what I did. I set it up for that second mode, so that's mode two is one which allows you to set both. Good little controller, it works well, so yeah, got another one. Always need spares, always. So I did show one of these about a month ago, same as this, same package, and that arrived broken. And I actually got money back from that, that was good. And then I managed to 3D print myself a replacement part, which has worked. So that was quite good in the end. There's a lot of messing around. So I needed more anyway. So I bought some more. So I've got two packages the same. Last one I thought it's really well packaged. And I opened it up and found it's broken. So I thought I'd jinx that one, I think. I'm not saying it this time. So the first problem was that the catch was broken on the front. So the catch here, which is broken. This one is not broken. This doesn't appear to be. No, that's fine. And also had a rubber seal missing, just like this one. No rubber seal, no rubber seal around there. So these are not water resistant. But this one has all the foam inside it. So it seems like they're getting cheap these days and not putting rubber strip in. It's not too critical. I would just like to be there. The other one I got didn't have this big thick foam in it. It had just these thin ones in it. This one was missing. And so there's no rubber strip around the outside either. So this one's closer to the right, but it's still not right. No rubber strip. Again, it doesn't really matter. This isn't really used in the weather that much anyway. I would like to keep the weather out of it, but it's not that critical. Let's check the other one. Okay. That should seem good. No rubber seal. Has foam. Well, this has been consistent. Like I said, it would be nice if that was in there. The other ones I purchased previously from, I think it may have been a different seller. Or sort of a different name, I should say. Probably the same person. They did have the rubber seals, but that was a couple of years ago now. Maybe three years ago. And those were better in that way. These actually look better made than the first lot I got, to be honest. The first ones I had actually were warped. The plastic was ejected from the mould too soon. And they were warped quite badly. These ones look a lot better. These look much straighter. Everything looks in line. So these actually made better. Who is that, I suppose? It's not waterproof like they're supposed to be, but oh well. Check out the links down below for more stuff to watch. Click the subscribe link right there if you're not already subscribed. Click the bell icon too. Right there is a Patreon support link if you want to help support the channel, help to buy things from our bag. Maybe like more Wokehams or something. Good luck.